listeners and subscribers. Hope all is well. So first, I've got to say, you know, you guys are great. You guys are great. Thanks for the support. Uh, I'm not going anywhere just yet, you know what I mean? Uh, I do plan on sticking around here, if not for anything but for defiance, uh, to spread this information, okay? And, and you know, if, if not for you guys, even for myself, just to sometimes this stuff is like bursting out of me at the seams and, you know, there's there's very few individuals uh, in my immediate sphere of influence or circle that, that sort of absorbs this kind of stuff. So just putting this stuff out there is an outlet for me to sort of get it off my chest. All right. But uh, for those of you who have probably already heard, there was that shooting that happened on the campus of the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. Okay. And they killed at least, I think, two or three people and others were injured there. And... I mean, look, one thing after another, right? After the New Zealand shooting, after the Sri Lankan bombings, after the Notre Dame fire, uh, after that 19-year-old shot up a, a synagogue uh, at the end of Passover, you know, and now this happens here. It, it's just, it's very, it's very strange. You know, this this happened in a gun-free zone. You know, th those zones that says that if if a law-abiding citizen is found with a gun, you know, they can be you know prosecuted and, and fined and all this kind of stuff. And, and it's crazy because when it comes to these gun-free, zones, the only individuals who are going to follow those laws are law-abiding citizens. I mean, what the hell does a criminal care about a gun-free zone? I mean, these gun-free zones are basically a a welcome mat for a, an individual to go in there and, and take advantage of these poor suckers who can't defend themselves. I mean, it, the, and the problem is, is, I mean, when you call the cops and, and let them know that, hey, this guy's shooting up this area. By the time they arrive, I mean, they, they don't do much more than, than write down your statements. You see what I mean? But if somebody in that immediate vicinity said, hey, I, I have another firearm, I can handle this guy, there you go. And it's not, the, it's not the case of, you know, the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good, th as a good guy with a gun. But man, that's, that scenario has happened in a lot of cases, and that shouldn't be ruled out. I think uh, if we're trying to you know, address simply the tools that these criminals, these people who want to perpetuate violence um, use, I, I think we're short-sighted there. I mean, as we saw with, with arsons, with bombings, with knives, with firearms, are we going to overcorrect on each of these items and, and not address the behavior that perpetuates this type of uh, violence in the first place? I mean, I would think that, especially since in a lot of cases the FBI or local law enforcement has been watching these individuals who end up go off, you know, shooting anyway, uh, why don't we address the behavior, the mindset, the, the, the instinct to commit this violence, especially if they're, they've been on the radar before? I, I think that would probably be far more effective than trying to overcorrect and eliminate the tools that these uh, criminals decide to use because it, it ends up affecting, you know, the vast swath of everybody else, right? Punish the, the many for the, for the actions of a few. Uh, and I, I think that that's just an excuse they use to increase these totalitarian measures. That's why they don't have a conversation about, you know, the mindset of this stuff, at least not to the degree that they talk about, you know, the AR-15. You know, I talked about it in my last video, people, you know, this scary AR-15 doesn't even kill 400 people a year, yet knives kill upward of 1,500, Okay. And so it's not the it's not the weapons it's the mindset that needs to be addressed and that's really what I want to talk about there with the with the shooting that happened you know I'm not going to point out whether or not this actually happened or whether it's a false flag because ultimately like I said you know no good crisis goes to waste so no matter what this was they're going to be able to capitalize off of it okay and it was just yesterday as well where a 12 year old was arrested for threatening the elementary school uh, in Prescott Okay, it was a 12-year-old boy. He's facing charges after police said he would shoot up his elementary school. And the boy said he was going to bring a gun to the Granville Elementary School uh, and become a school shooter and kill people, right? And that's according to the police. So this is the kind of rhetoric that's being spread now, right? The, the guns. Let's focus on the guns. Let's not address the behavior, okay? Uh, and again, whether these scenarios or incidents are inflated, organic, or otherwise... Uh, it's it's ultimately what they're able to do uh, subsequently, no matter the dubious nature of these things to begin with, you know what I mean? And yeah, again, regardless of the organic or inorganic nature of these incidents, it's 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 the subsequent narratives that, that are ultimately going to come back and bite us in the butt, okay? And, you know, lastly, again, with, with, an, with another one of these events, right, uh, it, it's just, it's just interesting because now we have, it's a travesty, right? Massive fire rages St. Joseph Catholic Church in uh, North Phoenix overnight. 
And I'm thinking about these stories, right? When I wake up in the morning or a notification comes across my screen or, or however I, I am introduced to some type of information because obviously uh, oftentimes I'm going out there and searching it out myself. But I, I notice how a narrative starts to form, how they sort of make your reality overnight. Like while you're, while you're sleeping, while you're dreaming, uh, they come up with the things that they're going to cover and and the light that they're going to cover it in, right? The type of spin they're going to put on it. So by the time you wake up, which is what happened in the California shooting at the at the country club, okay, overnight they already had a story packaged for you uh, when you woke up, so you already knew what happened. You know what I mean? He he, a gunman came in, shot this club up. Uh, he had this tie to that, that tie to this, and it was all wrapped up in a nice package for you by the time you woke up, and that's what you were you were talking about for the next two days. That's how they warp your perception, you know. And with these with these fires, it, this this one here that happened in uh, North Phoenix at the St. Joseph's Catholic uh, Church, okay, it's still under investigation, okay, and we'll we'll see what the authorities have to say about this but it's just it's very interesting and strange that all these events are are, co are coinciding at the same time i mean just right the new zealand shooting the sri lanka bombings the notre dame uh fire the the shooting at the synagogue that just happened right this fire that happened and churches have been you know burned and and defecated on and uh vandalized uh, recently, right? With, with just within the past uh, year and a half, it seems, but the news stories are now starting to trend in the direction where where they're trying to, they're, again, they're trying to capitalize off of this. Uh, they're trying to capitalize off of our mental malleability, which is what I talked about in the last episode, after these crises. You know, and that's what they do, which is why whether you scrutinize the incident itself or you're sort of dubious of the subsequent narratives that come from it, uh, I think you're doing your job. As long as, long as you're scrutinizing some of this information and, and putting it past some kind of filter and, you know, telling your, your friends or your pals, hey, this might not be exactly what, what they say it is, I, I, I think that questioning that stuff is, is healthy. When we start to sort of go down other paths, I, I know that, you know, we can go into realms of disinformation, but really I think what we need to do is, is, is maintain a focus so we aren't taken advantage of during times of crisis like this. And that's ultimately what I want to point out. I mean, just look at these instances. They're mirroring the high-profile incidences that have been happening, you know, all, all across the pond recently. And there's something to this because now the governments all around the world are responding, right? I mean, we see what's happening in Sri Lanka. We see what's happening in India. We see what's happening in Venezuela, um, the United States. And I mean, pick your territory, pick your region. Uh, there's, some, there's something transpiring there, but it's, it's all on the similar trajectory because ultimately all these nations and states, they're going to be brought into this, this new world order. Like I, like I always talk about it, right? Uh, you know, nothing in politics happens by accident. Right. And that is the new world future, a future in which seemingly isolated incidents start to occur uh, in more succession. And it's the people's rights and freedoms that are limited to try to curb the the actions of a few. The vast swaths of the people are punished. And I think that we need to I need I think we really need to look at that because that's going to be the crux of this agenda. Anyway, California Carter signing off. Mm -hmm.